I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Deb Weinstein. Deb and I also met online, and she's active in the Us Guys group, and she's such an inspiration. Um, she's the president of Strategic Objectives PR in Toronto, and I'd like to thank you for joining us, Deb. Peter's going to just here. Hi, everybody. It's really exciting to be here, and I really want to thank Mila and Joseph for putting this all together and bringing, uh, bringing us all together. It's amazing to see so many us guys in one audience. I've been working in PR for some 25 years now, and I'm thrilled to see the practice of public relations and social media move from a nice to have to a need to have in the marketing mix. And that's exactly what I'm going to speak with you about this morning, is the convergence of public relations and social media and why they're soulmates when it comes to building and protecting your brand story. I work in a lot of brands. I work with a lot of big brands. And I'd like to start first with my own definition for PR, because there's been so much debate of late as to what PR really is and its role in the marketing mix. So my handy dandy definition is that PR, with its two-way focus on dialogue, builds open, honest, and transparent bridges of communication between a brand, business, and organization. And it's many diverse audiences, be they employees, shareholders, stakeholders, consumers, and the like. At Strategic Objectives, we use the awesome power of PR to build, maintain, protect, and sell brands. And our strategy-driven programs generate awareness, engage engagement, and understanding that combine to build brand equity, loyalty, and sales. PR, with its honest broker approach, provides consumers with relevant content that builds a community of brand advocates, people who will love you through the good times and defend you through the bad. With social media, the most important audience is just plain folks like you and me, the empowered, info-seeking consumer who has every right to align with your brand and to become your advocate or enemy, depending on what you're up to. From a PR perspective, you must listen, join, engage in social media to be effective. And to be effective, you must play to win. And you have to differentiate yourself from everybody else. To do this, you have to be original. Get ahead of the curve. Be the trendsetter. Be the trend spotter. Your customers are seeking informative, entertaining and helpful content and sometimes an outlet to vent their frustrations. So to those of you who are new to social media or social PR, be warned and beware. Social PR is a 24-7 year-round activity, an ongoing commitment with risks and rewards for engagement where your words and actions have the potential to live on forever and where good or bad news can travel with the speed of a tweet. PR pros, social brands, embrace these risks because the rewards are so rewarding and so tremendous. So the key with any brand engaging in social media is P2P. That's person-to-person -person communication to move your consumer up the brand ladder. From awareness, I've heard of Oreos, to acceptance, I eat Oreos. <laughs> to advocate, Oreos are amazing, you should try them. To adore, I love Oreos. I buy them for my friends and my family, and I carve them into my scalp. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> At Strategic Objectives, we use a simple five-step process to engage consumers and turn them into adorers. Tell a great story. Produce amazing content. Target, target, target. Talk to the right people. Fish where the fish are. Be timely, relevant, credible. Take time to follow up. It's all about following up, nailing down the sale. And then this will come as no surprise to you, to the socialites in the audience. Track, measure, and evaluate. So 
to highlight what I mean, I thought I'd take a look at a recent news story, one that completely missed the social mark and demonstrates how a brand can win or lose by telling the right story to the right audience at the right time. Remember this? Yeah, it was only five short months ago that Carnival Cruise Lines Costa Concordia hit a reef and sank off the coast of Italy. It was a massive disaster with loss of life and environmental damage. From a crisis management point of view, it was the Titanic of bad PR. The ship's captain was completely unresponsive. Carnival continued its happy cruiser advertising despite the crisis. Carnival had absolutely no strategy for dealing with social media and their online community. Plus, mere weeks later, the Carnival crisis team had to ramp it up all over again when the Costa Allegra caught fire um, in the Indian Ocean and customers or their consumers, their passengers, had to endure what they called and tweeted and broadcast everywhere three days of hell. Hardly a way to build a business. As we know, crisis PR and social media are a conversation that never stops. Out, opt out of the combo, you give your fans or foes permission to gang up and become your enemy. Carnival Cruises, after six days of silence on their Facebook page, finally posted that they'd be taking a break from social media out of respect for those affected by the recent events. Talk about closing the barn door after the horses are gone. What's more, their CEO, Mickey Arison, who is a very prolific and active tweeter, posted on Twitter after six days that he was going to take a break from Twitter. Wow, what a coincidence. So what could Carnival have done better? Well, for starters, it's common practice for a brand to suspend advertising in the wake of a crisis, which they didn't do. But in the social world, it's important to remember that your Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn fans are not advertising and they're not heeding advertising. Carnival's decision to take a social break left its Facebook page wide open to criticism. And in the two weeks following the accident, conversation grew by 320%, all negative compared to the previous two weeks. Burying your head in the sand and leaving the keys to your social media channels on the counter in times of crisis is not the right response. What they woulda, shoulda, coulda done was kept their community informed and engaged with timely, credible, and relevant updates. They could have put their CEO live on the scene. That's kind of like basic PR 101. It goes all the way back to the days of Tylenol. Produce content. They, could, they have 1.6 million Facebook fans. So what did they do? They closed it all down, left the wall open, and let the lunatics run the asylum. What they also could have done was follow up with their customers, see how they were doing take care of them, offer them something good. They didn't do any of that. And what they also failed completely to do was to monitor sentiment in the social world. What they totally failed to do was build a community of brand advocates and ambassadors. In this case, the community took over. They took over the whole conversation while the brand provided zero content or context. Social PR has amazing power to protect brands through good times and in bad. When it comes to social brand building, it's your audience that's in charge. You must constantly feed them with info that they crave. In the olden days when I used to work in the news, in fact right here in Montreal at CBC TV, we thought a 24-hour news cycle was a really fast and speedy response. Today, news travels in the time it takes to tweet, and it has to be responded to accordingly. With social PR, you must remember that your consumer is 
always on duty, looking to celebrate or chastise you at the drop of a hat. It's how you approach this opportunity that determines whether you sink or swim in the deep blue sea of social networking. We know, and we should spread the word, that social media is our early warning system for customer sentiment, the good, the bad, and the ugly. The ball is now firmly in our court to listen, connect, and respond. And with that, I bid you farewell and bon voyage.